Ladies, it is my day of birth, my celebration of my birthday. Welcome, yeah, everybody. Birthday, baby, oh. baby. Oh. Happy birthday. We're so excited. Thank you. We, Thank stepped you it up. we stepped it up huge. You did. I cannot believe how gorgeous you look. We wanted to have a tea party theme. Welcome, everybody, to Grown Ass Women TV. Of course, that's a hashtag, Gaw TV. Thank you for being here. Thank you, ladies, for making this so special. We wanted to do a little birthday party, and you had a fantastic idea to have a tea party theme and you look gorgeous ladies uh -huh. well we Aww. had to class it up for you my love you Ooh. know yeah i'm so, i'm shocked you guys haven't said spot a tea yet spot a tea because it's not tea in my glass i was in going to say who is it are, are any of us actually drinking tea or is it a boozy tea um, i have red wine so my teeth will match my outfit at least oh gorgeous <laughs> gorgeous I'm not gonna lie to you. If it's my birthday, I'm having champagne, not prosecco. This is French champagne. We are uh, you said is that what you said about 27? It was. I, I actually picked one with the number 27 because that is my birthday. It's actually the 27th, but obviously we're gonna celebrate early because why not? It's my birth week. So here we are. We're so happy to have you guys here. Before we go any further, before the celebrations begin, do us a favor. Pinky up. Like this video. Give us old thumbs up. Classy thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel. That's most important. And of course, click the bell icon. I'm watching Mickey. Click that bell, shall we? Yes. Ooh, that's a fancy one. You got that at the antique store. I did, along with so many other things. But this is now, I've, it's made out of this rose glass. Like, it's like a little, I think it's a little fat baby. Look at the that. ring. Look at her ring. Oh, oh that. <laughs> There we go. Gorgeous. I need to put my ring on. I want to be fancy too. Click that bell icon to enable notifications so you never miss a future episode. Well, ladies, I have to say it's a really good idea that we are dressed up in our finest dresses because we have created da 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 da. Welcome to Dresselmania. Woo woo! Oh my goodness! So excited! Cheers to Dresselmania, ladies and gentlemen. It is our first project in the philanthropy world. We are so excited. And cheers to Girl Up, our chosen charity. It's going to be an annual event. Of course, we have to do things virtually this year because Miss Rona, as we know, is uh, running amok. But ladies, tell tell the fans about Dresselmania and how they can get involved. Oh, well, obviously, you know, we are starting to announce some incredible women who are taking part of it with us. And obviously, you can go to you know, we, you can follow Girl Up and see their mission and see what they do, but they're such an incredible foundation, lifting women up, lifting girls up to really give them their voice and their power and to, and to really just be independent and strong, which is what we are all about. Yes, we female empowerment, girl power. <laughs> and you'll see so many amazing dresses. So just make sure you go to gawtv.com. Obviously, you can go to our website. You can find all the information there. We're obviously going to be posting about it on our social medias. We're yeah. going to be announcing dresses, who's involved. I know. And I've been doing some interviews, you guys, and everyone's like, can you tell us a few names? Like, but that's the fun of it is we're going to try to roll them out, space them out so you can have uh, access to all of these amazing women who are in, obviously, professional wrestling, hence the Dresselmania pun. Um, but yeah, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to have you guys bid on the dresses. It's going to all go to a great cause, which is Girl Up is our chosen charity this year. All you have to go to is gawtv.com. That's where all of the information is going to be for our auctions. They're going to end right before the actual Wrestlemania event. So we're going to get you guys to get your bids in and help this amazing cause. We're so excited. We're so excited. The names that we got. Oh my God. Nice. We so, have we have some amazing friends that are into charity, so God well, bless them. I have to say, Val, this Dresselmania idea, this the term, the whole thing, that was you. Like we oh. used to Dresselmania last year, and we were like, oh, there was just no way because we had just started yeah. last year. Like we don't, we were only a couple months in, and we we're like, oh yeah, we should really plan and try to do something like this. And we've been talking about it, but obviously, there was no way to book the whole. Let's do the red carpet and all this, right? We're going to get there next year, but this yeah. year it's going to be incredible. It's an amazing first launch. And I think 
especially in times like like where everybody's kind of like whatever just to have a feel good thing and a reason to put on a dress again and to right. do all that you know not that obviously we need a reason because look at us guys. we'll take any I reason know. yeah yeah and then uh, yeah, to tell alan like you know stop claiming that he came up with this idea yeah alan was like it's a great idea i had i was like you literally might have been in the room when we were discussing it but that's about your extent brother yeah and where have you been with the arm bar uh drinks yeah get on you're that slacking arm bar. you are slacking that was our favorite part i know it was we, such we a hit. It was cocktail. such a hit. Let us know in the comments if you'd like us to create more signature cocktails for God TV. I'm going to assume that you would like more of that. And we would, of course. Whoa. Yes, WrestleMania is going to be so much fun. Use that hashtag WrestleMania when you're discussing our fantastic charity project. We also want to say thank you guys uh, so much for uh, not only supporting God TV, but supporting our Patreon, patreon.com slash God TV. We had such fun last week in our St. Patrick's Day chat. There's a picture there of us all looking hashtag gorgeous. Yes, and we have people from all over and, the world uh, in the Patreon international. chat. International, that's all international. And like, and congratulations to Wayne Clark for winning the um the Irish accent that gets my <laughs> um, little my St. Patty's little stuff, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm so excited about that. We we so did we, we we forced everyone in the chat to try out their Irish accent, and I'll tell you, even Thorsten, all the way in Germany, his was pretty damn good. I was very impressed with you guys. Yeah, was. thank goodness we excluded you, Val, because come on, that's not fair. Oh, you have yourself a bleeding good time there, laugh. <laughs> I think the trick is to learn like one phrase to say well, and then it, people think you can do the accent. And I really, I end up sounding like Jamaican somehow. I don't know what happened. I like, I like your um, Jesus, Joseph, and Mary. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. I feel like that's from okay. Titanic. I yeah. think it is. Uh, but ladies, we we love everyone in Patreon. Our special top tiers, we love everyone. But our gorgeous tiers, uh, our gorgeous patrons: Tony, Mickey D, Remy, Wayne, George, who's almost it's almost his birthday too. George, happy Georgie. birthday, Georgie. Thor Georgie. Aaron and our brand new member, Jesse. And they're just, they just keep growing and growing. Everyone from our top tier is actually gonna get an autographed baseball cap that Lisa, Ooh. this was your idea. These are so cute, these baseball caps. Everybody loves a baseball cap. Yeah. Everybody loves a baseball cap. Yes, yes, yeah, so I'm excited. <laughs> yes. I'm excited. Mickey, you should be getting that. And please take a picture of how the box shows up because my last shipment to you was a disaster. Was and Val, I felt there's like stuff in there for Val that got sent back to me. People that's what I felt like it happened to her package. Oh my God. He got a package, people. <laughs> you know what, Ace Ventura, when he's kicking it down the hall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, can I interrupt this right now? Because I have a video to show. Um, Mickey, is this the time to show a video? I think so. There's a video. Val, oh, oh. we love you so much. And yes. we just, we just want to celebrate you. No. And we want to tell the world how amazing you are and how we couldn't do this show without you. You're so brilliant. You're so driven. You're so smart. You're so freaking funny, dude. Yeah. I just, we love you uh, so much. We and do. We love you and we appreciate you. And just like, you are an amazing friend. And I'm so thankful that, that you're a part of our life. And then like, you guys can look at a trading card pack in TNA, who my opponent I would wish I'd to have. <laughs> Val. If she wrestled, I would love to wrestle her. How about that? Those laughs, right? Mickey, like you and I trying to make each other laugh. Imagine Val like, in the I ring. I don't want to wrestle anybody. Like, yeah, I know. You know I'm allergic. Otherwise, I would have done it. <laughs> I really didn't think I would cry on this episode. I know you probably would think that I would because I'm I'm the crier of the group. I'm very lacrimose. Yes, that's a word. You can Google it. I'm using it correctly, I promise. Uh, I'm the lacrimose one of the group. <laughs> Quick to tears. But thank you guys so much. I love you all so much. I was just saying yeah. in an interview, like I get to do this show with my best friends and it's like, this isn't work. This is just us hanging out. And I know. Guys, I love all of you that are watching. We have been, we have honestly swear to goodness, we have the nicest people. We talked about our Patreon chat. We have, the, we, there's never been problems. The sweetest people that follow the show and that send their love all the time. So I'm sending it right back. Oh. Okay, I am gonna show this video right now. So, um, okay, hold on, bear with me. Cause I don't know if it's gonna register my glove. Happy birthday, Valerie. Hello, my darling. I'm so honored to be here at your fabulous tea party. Obviously, I'm dressed for the occasion. Um, let me just have a cup of tea, darling. Mmm, splendid. Uh, usually, you see me on a Sunday on our fabulous show, Sunday Splash. Don't forget to check that out on Instagram. But I'm here today to say a happy birthday to you, my love. Uh, wishing you a fabulous day and also little surprise you know I'm always a queen that loves to give surprises honey so 
coming up soon is somebody that you know very, very well. Uh, you've met this person a couple of times and um, let's just say she's part of some drag race royalty. Um, she's an all-star, not one sunny, but soon to be a two-time all-star, uh, season seven finalist, the fabulous Ginger Minch. Happy birthday, darling. And thank you, Erin, for hooking this up as well. Oh my God. Yes, is there someone in the right no, waiting room? No, 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 not here, here. Yes. You're... Is there someone in the waiting room, Val? There's, is there someone in the waiting room, Val? I feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack. Like my my chest is burning. Oh my God. You're effing what? kidding. I figured it was a cameo. Okay, wait, wait. I thought uh -oh. he was gonna be like, here's your cameo. Okay, um, I'm sorry. What do we do? What do we say? I don't, uh, what do we say? I, I'm so bummed that I, I was playing the video over my face. I'm so excited. She didn't, it was, it's okay. I feel like I'm gonna be sick. Don't <laughs> freak out. You, Don't freak out. You're talking about Ginger to... Minch, right? Did I hear that? Am I crazy? Do you understand yes. that? Okay. I, I have not met them. And do you know why? Because I've been to her show and I was too nervous to go say hello. She was from here to there. She was right there. And I didn't say hello because I was scared. <sighs> what do you say to a queen of all queens? Oh my God, you're effing kidding me. They're in the waiting room. What uh, do I I can't. No. We have to say a huge thank you to Aaron. Aaron, thank you, Aaron. And Aaron, who made this happen. Hey, buddy, I wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I love you. I miss you so much. And I really hope you enjoyed your special guest for tonight's episode. Cheers, ladies. Mmm. Shoe room twirl. Please welcome our very special birthday guest for you, to you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Ash, for that incredible, incredible introduction. Um, and Lisa playing go-between to make this happen. We're so excited. Thank you, Aaron, for hooking this up. She reached out to and Ginger's hus hu husband, CJ. Thank yes! you, CJ. Yeah, he's a great, he used to work for TNA. So big shout out. He's a huge wrestling fan. So thank yeah. you for, um, for making this happen. Oh my let's, God. Let's welcome. Drum roll. Oh I have to let her in. She's, it says Ginger Minge. It says Ginger Minge is in the waiting room, and like I don't even want to press the button. I'm freaking out. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, do it, do it. I can't. I'm gonna spill my your tea. Cup, your tea I'm cup. Your tea I'm cup. Take a sip. No, I'm scared. No way. No way. I can't. I can't. This is not happening. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. I'm gonna. Spill <laughs> oh no! Yes! Ginger, thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to join the party. I heard it was a say something hat day. Oh my God, you're in theme. Oh my God, I want to cry. Ginger Minge, I am such a crazy huge fan. Thank you for being here. This is the best birthday present ever. I love it. I got to meet you when I was in London. Yes, and I was just telling the girls I'm freaking out. So if, I am, if I'm an insane mess, I do apologize. I'm always an insane mess, but at least it's been diagnosed properly by a well, that's good. <laughs> I am such a fan. I just told the girls that, I mean, we sort of met at, um, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Sorry. Um, we sort of met at Drag uh, Con, Drag World. And yeah. I told the girls the story. You were in um, this beautiful white dress. Hopefully we can find a picture that you had all of the fans sign on your dress. Do you remember? I do remember that. Mostly because it took me about three weeks to get all the Sharpie off of my body. <laughs> because it seeped through that real cheap taffeta that I use. <laughs> It was such a cool idea. I loved it because it got the fans involved. And as we were passing, you went like this, like, because we were pretty dressed up. And I think you must have heard us talking because obviously we're in London, but we have very loud American accents. And you said, where are you girls from? And we both at the same time looked at you and said, Orlando, because that's where you are. It is where I am. It's where I am right now. Is that where you are? And I'm, I'm actually, um, I live a little bit north of London. So my husband's British. Okay. So I live over here now, but yeah, I saw you there. And then I was telling the girls this story. That's why I was freaking out because they said, oh, did you meet her? And I said, well, not really, because I went to your winter show in London and you, uh -huh. I, I got in a little bit early. Thank you so much to your wonderful husband, CJ. He is such a star. Thank you to him. Um, he got us tickets and I was so thrilled to go. And you were out in sort of the lobby area before. And my friend who loves you as well said, we have to go say hello. And I said, I just can't. What do you say to a queen? I can't, I'm not worthy. And I never said hello. Uh, hey, queen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Do that. 
It's such an honor to have you a part of our show, Ginger. Honestly, you are just drop dead gorgeous. Um, and just, yeah, you are, you are. There must be a bad connection or a really heavy filter, but thank you so much. Oh, stop it, stop it. No, we're just so honored to have you a part of our show and be this big surprise for Val. We love Val so much. She's such a great person with a big heart and she just deserves the best birthday ever. So thank you to part for partaking on in this. For making it the best birthday ever. For yes. Sure. We have we have we have teacup and tea saucers, but there's no tea in it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the tea? Yeah, the tea is Cabernet. Mine is Cabernet. <laughs> are, are you drinking, Ginger? I don't drink. I've actually so actually my Christmas tour in London the night that I saw you guys um, was the last night I ever drank. Oh really? Really? Good for it, you. It, I got so sick after that, and I, which well, I'm pretty sure was the coronavirus. Um, mm -hmm. Now that we know more about it, but I got sick with like this flu that wouldn't go away, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And so I just couldn't drink for a while. And then by the time I was able to drink again, I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I can actually remember things now, so I think I'll stop. Isn't that crazy how that works? Oh yeah. God, I have to tell you, it's so surreal to talk to you because I watch Drag Race all the time i'm a big fan of the reruns especially in lockdown you know we're very much locked down here i'm still marking out sorry fangirly Whew. um breathe val hang on um <laughs> in, in lockdown it's it's a nice escape for me to just re-watch all of the shows but i really honestly feel like i know you do fans say that to you all the time that they feel like they already know you they do that but the weird thing is i feel like i know the fans as well because i i'm one of the few girls that i actually i run my own social media i don't bring anybody else in i want to make sure that i talk to everybody um and cj actually went and found the dress that we were talking about no uh -huh. way yeah oh my lord that isn't that cool wild. covered in signatures um wow. our fan with it was to auction it off for the trevor project but we just haven't gotten that far yet because the world just kind of shut down before right. we could. Wow. Um, but that's that's the plan. But it just goes like back to what I was saying about, I love the interaction with the fan. Like the best part of the job for me is meeting people. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's yeah. just, it's so fun for me to go to, you know, we do a lot of comic cons, uh, you know, from our backgrounds in professional wrestling and, and to go around drag con and drag world, even if I don't, if I'm too shy, hello, clearly, to go up to some of my favorite queens, I love to watch how they interact with the fans. And it's so important. Like Lisa and Mickey both have very stellar reputations for dealing with the fans and, and being so warm and open. And I know Lisa, especially you miss Comic Con so much. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big part of it. And I also attended LA RuPaul's uh, drag, drag con. So yeah. yeah, I was I was there and I was like, why am I booked on this? Do I have a big following in the drag? Evidently, they are huge wrestling fans. And I was like, oh. and of course, I'm like, when are you guys going to book me again? Because that was the funnest uh, Comic Con, uh, uh, the con, the conventions that I've ever attended because it was so, oh my gosh, in the makeup. And I was like, I think I need to step up my game. I need to work on my comic That's how they make me feel. My I'm like, I thought I was kind of extra or like okay with make. And I go, oh my God, I, it's amateur hour over here when I see girls like this. No, I can't. I feel like that, like still to this day, <laughs> having been on the show, like makeup to me, I've always called myself an artist who, who uses makeup and not a makeup artist because I see some of these other girls and like every single detail is just perfection. And it has taken me 15 years to figure out this. So I do, I know what you're talking about and I get very jealous sometimes. <laughs> up close you're like you know it's one thing to look okay on camera but up close it's like it's absolutely flawless but oh my god i could ask you a million questions i want to know first of all how the pandemic has been for you and what are you working on now what are you looking forward to oh gosh um actually the pandemic i mean it has sucked because i can't go out there and meet fans i can't travel we haven't been able to do any conventions and i'm running out of money but <laughs> i have enjoyed the fact that like it has kicked my ass into gear as far as being creative and resourceful. So like, especially the first like half of the lockdown 
where everything was super crazy, couldn't go anywhere. Everything turned digital. So we moved in with my best friend, Gidget, who's here in Orlando as well. And she and I cleared out the garage, set up a little uh, vi uh, movie studio, and we just started doing shows, digital shows every single day. And we were we did a, a Lion King tribute where we were making animals out of old antlers from Christmas, bunny ears, and feather dusters. So it was like, how do we make a big, like, high quality production out of literally the junk from the garage? <laughs> so, and I felt like I hadn't had a chance to really do that since Drag Race, uh, particularly because, you know, now you're, you are just constantly on the road and, and you're, you're constantly doing new things, but it's still the same stuff, like in the same realm. And it really gave us the opportunity just to go and do what we wanted and be stupid. So that has been like the best part of the quarantine was just being creative and silly again, really. Yeah. Yeah. Mickey, you, you and I have talked about the fact that we don't know if we would have had the time or resources or what have you to do this show if it weren't for lockdown. And I think that's kind of why we got more creative and that's why we created the show. Mickey, do you remember that when we had that conversation when we first started yeah. the show? Like, would we have had time to do this if it wasn't for this horrible situation going it on? It wouldn't have because we're all on the road separately, everybody's schedule, you know, and it is. It's constant hustle and a grind but as far as your creative what brought you to the dance in the first place is your ability to be yourself and to like not have to fit in a mold to like break out and do these things but then once you get there you almost have to like then be this all the time right so then it's all just, the time it, yeah it blocks off your other creative but you're like oh i want to do this this and this but there's only so much time in the day and some of that time was meant to be lived you know and just enjoyed and you know exactly especially like so I it was it's been what seven years since I did my first season of Drag Race and I have been constantly working on the road doing TV doing movies doing all that kind of stuff and it, it's it's a blessing I am never going to sit here and say oh I have too many opportunities right great and I love them <laughs> but I learned in the first like three or four years I wasn't experiencing any of these things. I wasn't living life outside of just getting on the airplane and jumping into makeup and wiggling around and collecting a check and doing it all over again. Uh -huh. right. So my husband and I started to really sit down and break down the schedule so that we actually had time to go places and right. see places and talk to people because my only memories of traveling the world were from the airplane window. Totally. Yeah. We talk about that a lot, how people say, well, wow, you've seen the world. What did you think of this city, that city? And we always say, well, the Waffle House was lovely. The airport lounge was great. We don't get to see a lot of it. Right. Yeah. I know they're always like, did you try this restaurant? Did you try? No, girl, I went to Denny's because it's the only thing open 24 hours. Exactly. Exactly. I got to 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 give you kudos that you answer all your social media stuff we do too and a lot of people do not do that they hire management and stuff like that and you're just like wow this is really not personal so that's like a big kudos to you and like i'm so proud that that you do that um not a lot of people do that and um i i, I do have i had a question darn it well i have to say well you can think of your question i'm just gonna say in response to that like I had hired somebody to run my social media right after, like during and after season seven. And it wasn't until I was like, let me just go on and kind of see what's coming through. that I realized I was missing all of these incredible messages from low fat sissy kids, just like me from little country towns that were trying to reach out to me to say, oh my God, thank you for, for showing me that I, there's more than this and that I can grow up right. and do whatever I want to do. And I was like, I wish that I would have seen this because it would have helped me get through all of the other bullshit that I was trying to get through. And because I was trying to avoid a couple of bad messages or just take my mind off it, I really missed all the good thing. So yeah. now I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it myself. I don't care how long it takes. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah. Just that reminder. Yeah, I love that so much too, because it is also uh, that reminder of why you did it in the first place. And it's like an empowering a whole generation of people to be not be afraid and just stand up and be who they are, right? Like, and so those, it's often that we see that one message, like we say that all the time, like that one negative message and it'll really ruin it. Even though we have these, all these amazing messages where you're like, oh, this makes me feel so good. And that one guy will just tear you up and all day. 
I, I just block him now. I just block those people. Thank God. Mickey loves the block button. button. But it is the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. My grandma always said it, and it's still true to this day. Like, I had to think about it from, okay, I used to work at a, a drag restaurant for years before Drag Race, and I would notice going on to, like, Yelp or whatever the, the little apps and stuff are, I would go on there and I would see all these negative reviews, and then I thought one day, oh, well, I guess that's because when something's going well, you don't really think about it. You just think, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. But when something doesn't go well, then you want your voice to be heard. So it's usually like <laughs> the people that have the ammunition to go on there. Yeah. It's because they've been wronged and they, they want everybody to know. Yeah. But yeah. If, and, they, and they don't speak about well, the positivity. Yes. Yeah. Then they're like, oh, well, that was fun. Let's move on to something else. Right. Well, Mickey, I remember my question. Um, oh. I heard you do every Thursday bingo in Orlando. I have, I can't wait to go. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. Where, where, where is this at? And are you every Thursday? Every Thursday that I'm available. Um, I'm here at Hamburger Mary's with my best friend, Gidget Kalor. It's I love that place. It's just, we're just idiots, honestly. We call it Twisted Bingo, and it's like a mashup of bingo and trivia and karaoke and stand-up. It's... Uh -huh. Anything and everything, we just throw it against the ball to see what sticks. Oh my God, uh, I can't wait to go when I'm back home. I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm gonna be down in That's Orlando soon. Fun. I'm gonna be is there a, in a few weeks. Is I it think. okay if we if we come to your show like this? Just like, hi, we're here for Ginger. <laughs> you have to, you absolutely have to. I, I keep getting distracted because my husband is behind the ring light over here going, oh my God, oh my God. I'm Please tell oh, him to come oh, in. <laughs> Bring him in, bring him in. See, this see. happens, so we're so grateful. Yes, yes. This I hope he knows that I like he is, He's a former wrestler. He's a huge wrestling fan. He's a fan of all of you. You little <laughs> man, I can't believe you did this. Thank you so, so much. I'm freaking, he knows, because I was texting him going like, I don't know, I, don't, I couldn't say hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was already following you. Yeah. On social media. I for years. That. When you started following me, I freaked out. So <laughs> I just followed you guys. Yes. And I can I can back that up because I was in a dead sleep. <laughs> just I hadn't slept in days, been working on stuff. I'm asleep and he goes, Oh my god, you'll never guess who followed me. <laughs> My God, you guys are a power couple. I am so yeah, no doubt. You. thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, like, work, it, it dream awesome. work. like Mickey just hit the nail on the head, and I'm I I say I'm not gonna cry, but I probably will. The reason that uh -oh. drag is such a big deal to me is the change that you make in people's lives and teaching people tolerance and teaching people to be themselves and people that don't understand drag don't get that so people that are that are maybe not into it if you're watching now this is what you know rupaul's drag race and and the drag community is all about acceptance and love and let me tell you something about our ginger minch here okay we have the great thing about drag race is that you know just like wrestling you know everyone here is usually a wrestling fan you have you know you have these debates with your friends like, well, I like Gigi Good. Well, I don't like her. She's bitchy. I like this one. There's different, you know, types of drag. And it's it's great because there's something, it's like, you know, Baskin Robbins, something for all flavors. And, um, but sometimes you have, you know, they'll call it like a look queen. And, you know, they're great at the looks. And then you have the performance queen, a comedy queen. Miss Ginger here is the absolute, this is why I'm such a fan, is a total package. Looks, personality, charisma, talent, performance such an, a well-rounded queen and that's why i'm such a fan so i have to give you that compliment first and just raise a glass to you thank Here. you oh it's my god but you oh. are and it's us too that damn covid i know and some are good at you know a few but you really are the total package which brings me to a total fangirl question i have to ask your opinions on uh -huh. first of all our uk winner lawrence cheney did you follow UK Drag Race? Yeah, of course I did. Of course I did. I think that UK season two was probably the best season of Drag Race since All Stars 2. What? I just thought the cast was incredible from top to bottom. I thought the, cha the challenge was really well thought out. I thought that they handled the break because of the pandemic right. beautifully. They didn't shy away from it or hide it. They just yep. really kind of embraced it. Um, and Lawrence actually opened for my UK Christmas tour a the year before the one that you saw. Oh, wow, no way. 
Yeah, so in that very theater where I where you saw me, which was was the Clapham Grand, right? Yeah. yeah. The, uh, there's a video of Lawrence and myself up in the dressing room, just drunk, eating gummies, <laughs> all sorts of gummies, just quietly. Um, and she and I got very close on the tour because, you know, when you're on tour, you just spend all of your time with whoever is immediately in your circle. Right. They're the only ones that are running on the same schedule as you. They're the only ones that are sleeping at the same time as you or awake at the same time as you. So we got very close and I was very excited to see her on the show. I know that she had auditioned for season one and didn't even get a call back or anything. Wow. So whenever she got the call for this one, she was ecstatic and I was so excited for the world to see her and then boy did this year and now she's she's a winner baby and I, I I'm more proud I love that I do yeah. too you guys would love Lawrence Cheney what an absolute talent we were all very thrilled with that result but again one more drag race question anyone that's sticking out to you in season 13 again with you being such a well-rounded total package type of queen I'd like your opinion on the the ones that are upcoming because it's it's been a long season. People are actually surprised that there haven't been as many eliminations, right? I know. Here we are, two years into it. It's lasted longer than the, than the pandemic, and we're, we've only sent home two girls. I'm sure. What? It, the longest season ever. Um, it, it's really kind of for me. It builds up momentum and then it falls, and it builds up momentum and it falls. And that's not a fault of the girls, but I didn't understand like why we needed three full episodes where nobody went home or why we needed like the Corona, um, the pandemic uh, documentary in the middle of the season instead of doing the beginning or at the end. I just thought that it kind of killed the momentum a little bit. But now I feel like it's really starting to pick up more steam and I'm getting excited about it again. And I'm in love with Simone. I think Simone is has such a distinct point of view when it comes to drag. And I always tell all the girls that come up to me and they're like, will you be my drag mom? Will you teach me how to do drag? What should I do? My advice is always, I don't care what you do. It's about how you do it. It's about what you put out into the world. And I want to make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Because drag in and of itself is a political act. And you've got to be able to go out there and have a point of view and make your voice heard. And I feel like Simone does that 100% every time she hits the stage. Um, I love Mick. Mick uh, actually painted me for the Dumplin' premiere and uh, for my very first album for the, the cover of it, it was Matthew Anderson and Mick. And I, I've never felt more beautiful than when Mick paints me because they are just so incredible with a makeup brush. And that's something that has always kind of eluded me. Like I know how to do makeup and I think that I do it well, but not to that level. She's insane. And it's just insanely talented and also so funny. And I think that the Paris Hilton Snatch Game was, it was a game changer, particularly for Mick. It, it was so funny, it was so spot on. You know, a lot of times you either get somebody who looks like the character, but isn't anything like them or has the character down, but doesn't look like it. She had everything. It was so good. Um, so I'm really excited to see kind of what she accomplishes the rest of the season. And I think Candy is just the most fun. <laughs> I know that there's so many people that hate her online. She's very polarizing. Yeah. She's very polarizing, but you need that with television and you need it with competition. You need somebody that's going to keep the momentum. It's going to keep everybody on their toes. It's going to make people work harder. And I feel like Candy really is doing that. So those are the three right now for me that are like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's a close call. Who's your favorite, Val? Who's your favorite? You know who I love? And I, I feel, I'm so glad that Ginger's here for a billion reasons. By the way, we do this thing, Ginger, that like, we, I always say to the girls, like, I try to look at the camera because, you know, if you're looking down, but you're so stunning that I can't. I just have to keep it. <laughs> like, she's so stunning. We're all looking down at her I know. screen. So yes. I stop. Down me. It's like an out of body experience. I'm like, is this really happening? Um, so, as you can see, I'm a big Sasha Velour fan. And uh -huh. by the way, when your ginger, ginger minge pillow comes out, I will be replacing that. So, we will do that. Um, 
I find that Utica gives me a little bit of Sasha Velour vibes in the sense that I love that she's artistic. She's a bit quirky and weird. She's a little bit polarizing too because a lot of people don't agree with me on that. But I like her a lot. I feel like she is the love child and I don't like to compare queens to other queens typically, but I feel like she is the perfect combination of Sasha Velour and Thorgy Thor. Yes. It's okay. like the two of them had this kooky yep. little love baby and it's Utica. <laughs> yep. It took me a while to warm up to her, I'm not gonna lie, because mm -hmm. I felt like originally watching or the first couple of episodes she was in, there was something very inauthentic about her or when she was speaking. Because you know, a lot of times the girls go on there and they try to be somebody else that they think the whole world wants to see and usually it backfires. And I was afraid that's what we were getting with her because it seemed very calculated. But as the season has progressed and as I've seen her, her lives and her interactions on social media, I realized that's genuinely who she is and I love it. So I'm, I've done a full 180 on Utica and Tina Burner is like the opposite end of that where she is a close friend of mine. I've known her for years. We both won the National Comedy Queen pageant. I won in 2012 and she's our current reigning right now. And I know how wonderful she is. And then she went on TV and tried to be somebody that she's not. And it, it's, it's really unfortunate to watch that when it's somebody that you know and you really care for because she's just kind of floundering in this persona that's not her. When I know that if she had just gone in like she always is, she would have murdered the competition. She would have made it to the top and possibly won. I agree, I agree. And I think she's she's getting more likable, but it's interesting that, that people feel that sort of pressure. Mickey and Lisa, you know, you guys being in wrestling, you do interviews all the time. Do you sort of feel that pressure like to be kind of what people think well, Mickey James is going to be or what people think Right, Lisa yeah, well, my, my wonder was, well, was it a creative direction from perhaps a team, her team, or from television? Because that sometimes, like, what people don't realize is that sometimes dictates which way we kind of lean if we have, like, a creative director that says, hey, we need you to be more standoffish or be more, yeah. and it's really hard to portray. And I think that today's society, the way we just absorb information now, you can't be unauthentic anymore. Like it just comes no. through, people can tell, they know. They know that it's not being real and it's not true. And people want that right now, more than ever. They want more yeah. authentic. That's why reality television, that phony reality, that scripted reality. reality television yeah, reality. Away because, and shows like this or shows just like that are, people can be just genuinely who they are and just embrace it are really like what's taking over because People don't want that anymore. They just want you to be you and just stop apologizing. And it's enough. Time. Yeah. It's and it, enough. Yeah. And it's also also very see-through when you're trying to force some other character on them that it's not you. You know, but but you know, my character was uh you, you can ask your husband, I was really mean and I'm not a I'm not a mean person. You but I became this heel, this I, crazy <laughs> I, I was really crazy and I was really I, I was a bully. But I became that person in high school or junior high that beat up the little kids that were very unique. And I just did a podcast yesterday. Like she goes, what, what saying do you live by? And I said, be yourself. I said, you know, a lot of teenagers and um, young adults, they don't accept themselves for being unusual or being different and being unique. That's part of being strong is being yeah. and accepted and embracing yourself as being so unique, but like as our characters, a lot of people walk away from my signings. Wow, you're actually a nice person. I'm like, yeah, you know, we're, we're bad actors. Nice. We're bad, we're bad act I'm a bad actor that does my own stunts. You know what I mean? So like, you know, I'm, I'm not a mean person. I just, that was a real- you know, I actually get that a lot too. I, I, well, now the whole narrative has changed. It's been long enough that people really kind of know who I am and what makes me tick. Yeah. But right after season seven, I had some unfavorable moments right towards the end. Um, I won't make excuses for them. The only thing I'll say is they weren't shown in full context, so maybe they don't understand both sides of it. But that's how I felt in that moment. And I don't regret it or apologize for it because it does come from a very real place. And it's something that I had to sit back and watch and be uncomfortable with yes. to learn from it and become who I am now. But um, a lot of people will come up to me at DragCon and they'll go, 
I can't believe you're so nice. Oh my, I just <laughs> went over to this girl over here and she was my favorite and she called me a bitch and told me my blouse was ugly. But <laughs> you came over here and you let me come up and get some uh, signature for free and we took a picture and you talked to me. And it, it's just all about, no matter what, even if it's a, an uncomfortable situation, just approach it from truth. And I learned that as an actor, because I was an actor well before I was a drag queen. And the only thing that I was ever taught by every theater teacher I ever had was it doesn't matter if it's your truth, it just has to be truthful. So like you were saying about like you played this bully, even though it's not you, you have enough experience with those types of people and those types of feelings yeah. that you yeah. can pull that in and you can kind of harness that energy. And I think it's important for us as artists to be able to do that as well, even when it is unfavorable, because it shines a big glaring spotlight on something that needs to be talked about. Right, 1,000%. Yeah. Oh so and if you can do it in a fun way, it makes it even better. Yeah. Yeah. You're so brilliant. I was going to ask you to do like words of advice as your as your final thing, but you already did it because you're amazing. And of course you would. Why not? Um, I just talk too much. You go. I know you're so wonderful to be here. But final question, what are you looking forward to after the pandemic ends and everything can get back to normal? Are you looking forward to traveling, maybe coming back to the UK, hopefully? Everything. Everything. Um, I actually have a couple of things in the works for the UK. Uh, as soon as this is all lifted, I'm going to be spending a good little chunk of time with you. Here. Come stay with me. <laughs> I will. We'll have tea together and wear our fancy hats. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the world opening up. And I've also, during quarantine, I have written two albums. Um, they're almost completely recorded. Like I've just got a few finishing touches here and there. And I can't wait to release that into the world because one is very fun and funny. And then the other one is very just me. And like a therapy. Can we set. get a sample? Can we get a little sample? Of I it? heard we'll you right now. Person. It's amazing. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, you may not. <laughs> well, Mickey's oh, obviously I lost my voice. the singer of the group. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, hey, you never know. There could be a Ginger Minge, Mickey James duet. Yeah. Hey, I'm up for it. Anytime you want to. And theories about coming to your show and to the bingo game or whatever when you're in Orlando, because I come to Orlando a lot. So you just hit me up. You let me know you've got okay. CJ's contact. Okay. I'm die. Oh my god. Don't you dare, Mickey. I will die. I want to go <laughs> so bad. We'll send you a video. Yeah. <laughs> that would make it so much worse. <laughs> Well, Ginger, you are an absolute brilliant, I won't cry. You are such an amazing, amazing star inspiration to me. And I love you for being here. CJ, thank you. We will let you go. I know you're busy, but my God, thank you for being here. This is literally the best birthday I've had in years. I am such a fan. I appreciate everything. Happy birthday, beautiful. It's so nice to see you again. So nice uh, to see you. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Cheers, everybody. And thank, and thank, yeah, cheers. And thank you for being such a positive role model, Ginger. Mm. We really like, it's not just Val's a big fan. We're awesome. big fans too. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, look at that yes. glass. Here's my dear. Because I'm on keto too. Mm. Oh, keto. I tried it. I tried it. I like sauces too much. <laughs> I'm two months in. I've lost 33 pounds. Whoa. I, I said, I just need to lose those two more pounds and I'll be done. I don't care. Well, you look beautiful to us. And uh, Mickey, I do hope that you go see Ginger in person. You'll love I it. I am going I to. Go back there and, and go see you. We'll do some videos for Gotti at some point. But thank you for being here, Ginger. Oh, I am such a fan. So much. so much love. Okay. Mm -hmm. Love you. Love you too. All right. Bye, CJ. Thank you so Bye, much. Bye, CJ. Bye. 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 You're so you. Thank you so much. Go, yo, go.